anger is when expectation is not met by reality. Your expectation is to get a certain amount of value, expected value. Mm -hmm. And if that expectation is not realized, you can feel aggrieved, wounded, hurt. Welcome to Poker Life. Next question, Crispin. What are things that tilt most people at the poker table? Yeah, tilt is the death in poker. If you can avoid tilt, you will avoid losing a significant portion of your money at the poker table. Avoiding tilt should be among your primary goals. And so there are things that tilt everybody. Everybody's human. Mm -hmm. Obviously, bad beats are a thing, but there are different levels of bad beat. It's a bad beat if you get it in with, say, top two pair against a flush draw and your opponent gets there on the river. Uh, it's a bad beat if you have kings versus queens and a queen comes on the flop. These are bad beats, but intellectually they're possible to manage because they have to happen from time to time. Mm -hmm. And when it's sort of a cooler situation where most people would get into that spot, you don't feel as angry. You might feel disappointed that it didn't go your way, but you won't have that same sort of visceral anger unless it's been happening to you consistently over the course of a night or a few weeks. If you're in a downswing, these things could definitely add up. Whereas in normal, like if it just happens to you once, you can usually get over it. Whereas if you're in a situation where your opponent has fallen into a trap that you've carefully laid, you've done a blocker bet hoping to induce, you snap it off with your full house and your opponent just rivers a better full house with one out or two outs to come, that can be really tilting. It can be really tilting when your opponent plays poorly and it's rewarded for it. So let's say you get it in with aces versus jack three suited and mm. uh, they flop two pair or flop trips. This can be really uh, pain inducing. You, you know on the one hand you want people who are fun players to be playing at the table, yeah, of course. but to lose to them like that can be really discombobulating. When the dealers make mistakes, uh, as all dealers do, it can be really tilting. If, uh, for example, a card has to be re-dealt or uh, one of your cards gets turned up as it was coming to you and that would have been your second ace, things like that can be really tilting. <laughs> Uh, also, if you are accidentally string bet, so you're supposed to put all your bet mm. in one motion, but let's say a chip drops and you want it to go all in, but only one chip drops, uh, and you do that purely by accident, and you would have got someone's entire stack, that can be really tilting. Another issue was when I was at a WPT event, mm -hmm. and someone went all in, and I asked how much was it, and the dealer counted it out and set a figure, and I was like, oh, fine, I call. And it turned out that it was way more than what the dealer had actually counted out. And I would never have made that call in those circumstances. Oh and the floor came over and they said, you know, it's up to the player to know how much chips are in play. You can't, you know, put it on the dealer. So that, that cost me my tournament life uh, in the end. So the things like that can be really tilting. When things happen that are beyond your control, but the most common way of being tilted is being deep in the hole against people that you perceive to be bad players mm. uh, and perhaps if you're already on a bit of a downswing it's these things can spiral it's really important to find your center in that in those times can you just please clarify tilting so you can be emotionally tilted at the table mm. but still play well like is it just an emotional response to what has happened in front of you is that tilting or is tilting when you are playing badly in response to like you're deviating from your your prime strategy okay so there is feeling tilted mm -hmm. which is a state of mind it's actually a really good question i don't think poker players even clarified it for themselves it's a good kind of fissure you're drawing on here feeling tilted it is a, is an emotional state and you can still play well while feeling tilted. Mm -hmm. You can be self-aware that you're feeling tilted, that you don't act outside of your pre-prepared strategy on the basis of that emotion. And if you have an urge to do something and you realize it's because you're feeling tilted that you have that urge and you resist that urge, then you are playing very well. Moreover, if you're feeling tilted and you realize you have to walk away from the table, take a bit of a break, go eat some food, 
uh, have a drink, go to the bathroom, whatever it is to take you away from that space and that you will consent to yourself as you come back and sit down, that's also playing well. Sometimes playing well means getting up and going away and coming back when you're ready. If you are playing poorly and it is because you're feeling tilted, that is tilting. Tilting, okay. So if someone says, oh, why did that person do it? And they say, oh, they're tilting. It's because their emotions have taken over. And there are some famous cases where people have gone on monkey tilt and just given away their stack, given away their bankroll because they are trying to get back to even trying to take additional risks that they shouldn't be taking, acting outside of their strategy, which only accentuates the feeling of, of tilting because the likelihood is that they'll continue to lose and only when they've lost everything and they've left the table will they have an opportunity to start to recoup themselves emotionally. I see. So what are some strategies that you implement to prevent you from tilting? At the table. So first of all, when you sit down, you have to be aware that you could be tilting in the future. So being aware ahead of time, uh, because no one comes and sits down at the poker table anticipating to be in a situation where they're feeling really bad. Okay, mm. People expect to be winning, people expect to be doing well, playing well. And so it's important to understand that that can happen to you. Second thing is to be aware that inevitable things will inevitably happen, right? If you get it in with aces against kings, one-sixth of the time the kings are going to win. It's just inevitable. You might be way ahead. You have no absolute right to winning a particular poker pot. So just like in life, anger is when expectation is not met by reality. Your expectation is to get a certain amount of value, expected value. Mm -hmm. And if that expectation is not realized, you can feel aggrieved, wounded, hurt. Mm -hmm. And as a consequence of that, feel an emotional reaction and Mm -hmm. anger towards the players, to the dealer, to life, to the poker gods, uh, to yourself for sitting down in the first place. There's all these things that you can feel emotional about. And so being aware of all of this is absolutely critical and be consciously talking about this i like to read stoic maxims that Mm -hmm. uh, will help me kind of center myself to realize that there's nothing that i'm experiencing that others haven't experienced before or written about Uh, marcus aurelius the great roman emperor he had stresses on his shoulders that i can't possibly begin to imagine and he dealt with his stresses with extraordinary stoicism even temperedness and had a lot of self-talk in his meditations that meant that difficulties that arise in life or at the poker table can be managed in an even-tempered way. So one of your goals in poker should always be to act in accordance with nature, as the ancient philosophers would say. Mm -hmm. Nature does not mean being part of the animal kingdom or off with the trees. Nature is being who you are when you are at your best. Imagine a time when you uh, did not get enough sleep, you woke up stressed, you ran late for the bus, Uh, You realized you'd forgotten something at home that you really needed. You you couldn't go back for it. You were late for the thing that you were trying to get to anyway. And then you get some bad news. Okay. Think about how you behaved and reacted emotionally in that moment. Okay. Compare that to when you got enough sleep. You had a really relaxing shower, a good, healthy breakfast. Uh, Everything was leisurely. Everything worked really well. You got to your desk at work. And then you received bad news. Same news Mm -hmm. that was received, but your capacity to digest that information, process it and respond to it in a healthy and productive way, immensely greater. And so your goal in poker to resist tilt is to be in that space because bad news will come to you in the poker table. Something that you cannot avoid. But if you are in the space going into it, it is the best possible space and there's all kinds of things you should do to make sure that you are, then you can handle the slings and arrows and vicissitudes of the poker life and react to it in the best, most stoic, most effective way. So part of tilting or danger of tilting is that you're a bit splashy with your chips. 
And so, are there any strategies? Say you caught yourself. Oh my goodness, I'm tilting mm. to prevent you being exploited by other people at the table. Okay. So this really comes to the live field, and it only really works and is relevant for live poker. But if other people have noticed that you're on tilt or that it would appear like it's likely that you're on tilt. Let's say you've had a couple of hands in a row where you've made big mistakes or there's been you've been sucked out on brutally. You can do things to exploit the fact that you have this tilted image. So for example, let's say there is a busted flush draw and you've got top pair. This is, I don't normally talk poker strategy here, but, but here's just an example. Normally, you might bet half pot, two thirds for value, depending on the run out, depending on your opponent. But if you just go all in, right, and you do it suddenly, it looks like you've kind of just spewed your stack. You know, mm -hmm. you've missed your flush draw, you're frustrated, you're, you're over being bad beat, you shovel in, and it looks like you've got nothing. The chances of getting called by bottom pair or some hero kind of ace high is much higher if you've received a number of bad beats in the recent past because mm -hmm. people will take into account that, hey, you might be steaming. Mm -hmm. And if you behave in a way that's a little bit out of character in that moment, it will add to that perception. So because I have a kind of reputation at the table being relatively even-tempered, if I do steam off, mm. people will take that as information. So you can do kind of reverse tells in that wow. respect uh, and exploit the fact that you can be appearing to be tilted when you're actually not. So if you've had a couple of bad beats, don't be afraid to, to take advantage of that opportunity of having suffered so grievously. Hmm. Okay, <laughs> reverse a rent. All right, I didn't expect that. <laughs> so bring it back to you guys. Have you guys experienced tilt? I think everybody has. Do you have any strategies? Leave your thoughts and comments down below. If you haven't already, subscribe. If you're enjoying this kind of content, we'd love for you to join our poker community. Otherwise, see you next time and... Ciao for now.